Hey there, my name is Curtis Lucas and you're watching Empire Building. Have you ever noticed when trading Bitcoin mining stocks that they don't always follow uh, the trends or the direction that Bitcoin might be taking at that exact moment? Have you ever been confused by this? I mean, why would something that's directly correlated to Bitcoin not trade along Bitcoin? We're going to talk about that in this video and we're also going to talk about uh, the state of things in the market right now. As you can see, I got a haircut just to match my portfolio. Uh, but yeah, we got a lot to get into in this, so let's get to it. As I'm recording this, uh, Bitcoin has seen some continued weakness uh, throughout the aftermarket hours. So things aren't looking all that great for the opening of the markets tomorrow morning. But we are going to talk about that because I do think that we're on the cusp of a very big move. I've noticed a lot of people turning very bearish out there. Uh, I'm not of that camp. I am not ready to throw in the towel here. I think this is the critical level that we are at right now for more reasons than one. And one of those reasons has to do with the topic of this video. Bitcoin's performance today really wasn't all that bad. Um, and on several occasions, we saw the mining stocks headed in the opposite direction as the price of Bitcoin. So whenever you see something like that happen, it would serve you well to have a look at what's going on on the NASDAQ chart. The NASDAQ chart throughout the day looked a whole lot more similar to our mining stocks than the Bitcoin chart did. And there's a very good reason for this. It's a very simple reason. When we're dealing with these large markets, markets like the NASDAQ, the entire tech sector, or doesn't matter, the entire stock market, the organizations that are trading in these uh, securities, they're not doing it by hand the way you and I do. There's not a person with a mouse clicking on things, buying and selling. That is not how it works. They use automated bots programmed using algorithms. And these algorithms, the, the parameters of these algorithms can be adjusted from time to time uh, so that those bots carry out the instructions that their um, owners want them to. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is perfectly legal. Anybody can use them, even you and me. The problem is you got to program it yourself too. And generally speaking, uh, you're not going to be able to mimic what they do. So uh, in my opinion, don't bother at least not as well as they can, but there are some hints we can look to. This sustained fall that uh, the NASDAQ has been suffering, it's my opinion that the same algorithms that trade the rest of the NASDAQ are definitely trading these mining stocks, only the effects are hugely amplified. So it really doesn't matter that much during times like this uh, what Bitcoin does, but generally speaking, Bitcoin and the NASDAQ do tend to follow the same general direction. Not 100% of the time, but certainly they do trend that way. So it can be hard to tell uh, which is the horse out in front and which is the cart. And for mining stocks, I uh, do believe that it can be a mixture of both. But really, it depends on what those algorithms are programmed to do on that particular day. And at a time like this, when a whole lot of the interest in these mining stocks has faded away because uh, prices have come down so substantially. Uh, it's very easy for these uh, algorithms to take full control over the price action. So the reason why I'm harping so much about the NASDAQ uh, and its price action is because of this. If we have a look at the daily chart on the NASDAQ, I like to keep these moving averages on here. As you can see, we've been in a very uh, strong, sustained uptrend. But something is about to happen that has not happened since the COVID crash back in March of 2020. The price of the NASDAQ uh, broad market is just about to touch its 200-day simple moving average. This is a very key level of support. And I've witnessed this time and time and time again. Whenever uh, the prices reach these levels, we miraculously see a massive bounce. Now, it's not necessarily true that we're going to witness a full reversal to new all-time highs, but there is a strong probability that we are going to see uh, a pretty significant 
uh, price reversal or uh, relief bounce, if nothing else. So seeing as how we're just a few points away from reaching that level as we speak, uh, it seems pretty apparent that we are going to witness that between today and tomorrow. Uh, the only question in my mind is, does a bounce occur prior to the market open or after? But I also want to make this clear yet again, that this doesn't mean that we're, if we do see this bounce, it does not mean that we're out of the woods here. This is merely a technical observation that I've come to realize uh, after studying these charts for a considerable amount of time. Uh, when we go back, even at the crash uh, from the, uh, the COVID drop, when we first came down, we touched that line and saw a huge bounce from bottom to top on the NASDAQ. Uh, that resulted in a, uh, what do we got here, 11% rise. That is huge. Now, you have to bear in mind that we were coming from a pretty significantly high level. Uh, so we had seen a sustained drop day after day after day after day with no relief in sight. So I'm not surprised we bounced that much. I don't think we're going to see a similar um, impact this time. But I do think we will see some sort of relief bounce here. Another thing I want to point out is, uh, like I've mentioned many times already over the last uh, few weeks, is this concept of maximum pain theory. As it stands right now, we are substantially below the maximum pain price for all of these stocks. And I'm talking about the broader market in general, in, but in particular for the mining stocks. I know last time I shared this screen, my big fat picture was covering up the, uh, the information on this side. So I'm sure to move it over to the other side of the screen this time. But as you can see for Marathon, for the annual contracts, these long-term contracts that I've been waiting to expire are finally expiring uh, this week. And maximum pain price for Mara sits at currently $31. Now, considering right now, Marathon closed at roughly $26. That is unbelievable. $31 by Friday, would uh, we would witness a rise of 20%. Now, again, I want to make this perfectly clear. I am not saying that we are going to see a 20% rise in Marathon between now and Friday. It's theoretically possible, but... We're, I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to bet money on that. However, I do think that we are going to see a significant relief rally here. We can certainly see 10%. Uh, that I could definitely see. But just this is based purely from a technical analysis perspective. And I'm viewing the broader markets. I'm not even studying the charts of Marathon, Riot, or any of the other mining stocks. This is, like I said they are following these algorithms are following what's happening in the nasdaq and the mainstream media can spin any narrative they want to to explain this price action i think these algorithms are just programmed to target that level before reversing those gears and sending things back in the opposite direction um but generally speaking it still makes sense that you just can't keep falling in one direction sooner or later there's got to be some relief. And on the balance of probabilities, uh, history has shown us that these levels have been uh, important levels that have been respected. And again, it is my opinion. And again, I, I cannot stress this enough. It is my personal opinion that these algorithms are programmed in such a way to respect those levels. In fact, target those levels. For those of you who are curious, for Riot, that maximum pain level is $23. And as we all saw, again, not that we have to rehash this painful experience, but we closed at $18.70. Now, that only constitutes a 12% rise in the price. Um, so again, we don't know exactly how these are going to behave between now and Friday, but as I mentioned before in those other videos, those maximum pain levels are merely incentives. The market makers, those who are selling those contracts on the options market, stand to make the most amount of money uh, when the price of the stock closes as closely as possible to that maximum pain level. So let's see how this plays out. 
I was going to discuss a lot of this in another one of those um, candid videos, but obviously there's too much data that I wanted to be able to share on the screen um, and walk you through it. So it just made a little bit more sense to do this in the studio. So I hope that was insightful. I hope you learned something from that. But mainly, let's just observe how this plays out. I mean, I am putting this out there before it happens. I am no fortune teller. Uh, this, as I've mentioned before, has been absolutely of no use to me. Still, it's kind of fun to have. And how many times have you heard anybody say, if only they had a crystal ball? Uh, I've got one. It's useless. But in light of all of this, I am trying to analyze these patterns and take note of them uh, as these events play out. They are rare. There's not too many times uh, the NASDAQ or the stock market have reached these levels. And um, the NASDAQ has been particularly punished. The S&P 500 is still uh, currently sitting closed at uh, the 100 day moving average where it has bounced uh, every time uh, ever since, again, the COVID crash. Obviously, there's no rule saying it can't go below those levels. But as far as my memory serves me, there has been very, very few times um, where we have blown right through it without at least bouncing off of it. So what I'm talking about here obviously has to do with extremely short-term price action. As far as long-term price action goes, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. There are some more videos I want to do uh, to cover this a little bit more in depth. In particular, I'm talking about over the course of 2022. I've made it no secret that I'm still bullish. But I've also made it clear that I do think that we're in for a very bumpy ride. Ironically, this far into the pandemic, we there is a lot more uncertainty um, present today than there was, say, at the beginning of 2021. I have some thoughts on this, but to be honest, this is something I'm still reflecting on. Forming a coherent thought uh, that I'm comfortable enough to put out there is, is something that I, I want to take some time on. Just about anybody who made a prediction in the last year has been mainly proven wrong. Now, odds are that'll probably still be the case for any predictions I make uh, going forward, but I still want to give it my best effort. I still want to base it on the fundamentals and what I understand to be occurring in this space, uh, as well as the macro environment as a whole. The fact is now that uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are becoming more and more mainstream and we're seeing more institutional adoption, the broader market forces are as important as they have ever been. Expecting Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to uh, decouple or decorrelate um, from that environment is unlikely, at least in the short term. Now, if you're looking 20, 30, 40 years into the future, that's a completely different story. But a lot of things are going to have to happen between now and then in terms of developments and geopolitics. That's where we are now. So I'm already starting to ramble, but these are the thoughts that are going through my mind. And this is the kind of content I want to start focusing on uh, in the coming months as this uh, market continues to develop. I know that views are down. Um, there's not as many of you out there that are watching these videos, but sooner or later, things will turn around. New investors or the same old investors will show up again. But for those of us that are still here, you know what to do. Get back to empire building.